Maxwell was already convinced that currents in conductors are flows of particles. The discovery of electrons confirmed this intuition of Maxwell. Electric current thus results, from the movement of free electrons in a conductor. The rotational magnetic field, around the conductor, is attributed to this movement of electrons. This displacement must, necessarily, be relative to the fixed atoms in the conductor. The speed of electrons in conductors is supposed today to be, a few hundredths of a millimeter per second. Obviously, no magnetic field is produced by moving the conductor. The idea therefore, came to put the conductor in rotation. Two fundamental experiments, then seemed to confirm Maxwell's theory, the Faraday disk, and the Roland disk. Both of these experiments, were performed more than, a century, before it was discovered that electrons, have both an angular momentum, and an intrinsic magnetic field. However, any rotation causes an alignment effect, of the angular momentum, with the axis of this rotation. The link between, the angular momentum and the intrinsic magnetic field of the electron, leads to a totally different interpretation, of experiments involving rotations. Moreover, a third experiment, also based on a rotation, completely challenged Maxwell's interpretation of Faraday's and Ampere's experiments. A conductive disk is placed, in the magnetic field of a magnet. A brush makes it possible, to collect the current at the periphery of the disk. When the magnet rotates, while the conductive disk is stationary, no current is detected in the disk. Faraday thought that the magnet's field, with its flux lines, remained stationary, as the magnet rotated. It is true, that all field lines are identical. Nothing would therefore, modify the behavior of electrons. On the contrary, if the conductive disk rotates, a current flows through it. This paradox surprised Faraday. Nothing seems to change magnetically, and he would expect to see no current. A first explanation was proposed, after the discovery of electrons, the circuit composed of the rotating disk and the brushes, constitutes a loop which rotates, in the magnetic field of the fixed magnet. As a result, the electrons, in the circuit, are subjected to the Lorentz force and generate a current. This bold explanation, has since been eliminated and replaced by reference frame considerations. The speed involved in the Lorentz force is relative to the reference frame, in which the measurements are made, in the laboratory therefore. Consequently, there is indeed a displacement, of the electrons in a magnetic field, and therefore a Lorentz force which generates, a current perpendicular to the field lines, and to the tangential speed of the disk, a radial current therefore, collected by the brushes. These explanations of mathematicians take no account, of the fact that electrons have an angular momentum. In reality, when the conductor rotates the spins of the electrons, statistically align in the axis of rotation. And so the orientation of their magnetic field changes. It is precisely this orientation, that corresponds to a current, in the circuit of the disk. Rowland's experiment is usually, presented simplistically by a compass being deflected by a rotating electrically charged disk. The reality is much more complex. There is only a magnetic field, near the edge of the disk as seen in this photograph. Roland used a sort of circular capacitor. A rotating conductive disk, positively charged, was placed between the negative plates of the capacitor. Two compasses hang from a thread. The lower one is placed on the edge of the rotating disk. 
The small deviation, resulting from the magnetic field, is detected by a mirror attached to the wire. The rotational magnetic field, at a point on the disc, is the integral of the fields of the loops traveled, from the axis of the disc to the edge of the disc. It is therefore maximum at the edge of the disc. Within the framework of Maxwell's theory, this rotational magnetic field, has a component in the plane of the disc, if it is measured above the disc, or in a plane perpendicular to the disc, if it is measured on the edge of the disc. Maxwell's theory ignores the fact that, electrons have angular momentum. In reality, when the disc rotates, the spins of the electrons, statistically align with the axis of rotation. And so the orientation of their magnetic field changes. It is precisely this orientation, that is the cause of the magnetic field. An experiment analogous, to Rowland's experiment, but with an electric current in a rotating conductor, provides indisputable confirmation of the angular momentum interpretation of Faraday's and Rowland's rotating disk experiments. The magnetic field of the 4 mm diameter tubular copper conductor through which a pulsed current at 100 Hz from 0 to 2.5 amps flows, rotating at 260 revolutions per second, is measured by induction coils. The field in the rotating conductor, is about three times greater, than the field of an identical current, passing through the stationary conductor. The result is not really surprising, considering the result obtained by Rowland. However, the measurement with induction coils, brings a decisive element. The coils must be crossed by the field lines. In the rotating conductor, the electrons describe helices as in a solenoid. However, the magnetic field lines of a solenoid are parallel, to its axis, and therefore do not cross the coils. The considerable increase in the magnetic field during the rotation of the conductor cannot, therefore come from the motion of the electrons. The experiment with the rotating conductive tube through which a current flows shows that the magnetic field can only result from a gyroscopic effect. It can only come, from the intrinsic magnetic field, of the electrons, linked to their angular momentum. This intrinsic magnetic field is necessarily rotational. The orientation of the intrinsic magnetic field of the electrons, is modified by the rotation. This results in a magnetic field, that is all the higher as the speed of rotation is high, as shown by Rowland's experiment. In Rowland's experiment, the magnetic field observed, at the edge of the rotating disc, is the sum of the components, in the plane of the disc, of the rotational intrinsic fields of the rotating electric charges. The rotating conductor carrying more protons than electrons, the observed rotational magnetic field results from, the excess protons. In Faraday's experiment, when the magnet rotates and the disc is stationary, the angular moments of the electric charges, are not changed. The rotational intrinsic magnetic fields of electric charges, cancel each other out, as indeed in the absence of a magnet. Nothing happens. But conversely, when the magnet is stationary and the disc rotates, the angular momentum of the electrical charges, contained in the conductor, aligns statistically in the axis of rotation. The orientation of their intrinsic magnetic field, is related to their angular momentum, so it is also changed. But the intrinsic magnetic fields of electrons, and nuclei are opposite. Electrons are dissociated from the nuclei and their speed in the field of the magnet, submits them to the Lorentz force. There is therefore a current in the disk.